When building a culture of collaboration, it's so critically important for us as leaders to be thinking about how do we establish and reinforce team norms to guide the work of the team. So in this episode, what we would love to do is speak to leaders around why, why norms are so critically important for the work that you do in collaborative teams, how to go about developing those norms that honor and value everyone's voice. We then are going to share three ways that you can continue to reinforce, understanding that just creating norms is not enough. How do we continually use them to influence our interactions with one another? And we're going to finish off this uh, podcast uh, slash webcast with some fun ways that we've seen organizations bring in their norms to reinforce, but also have a little bit of fun doing so. So let's get started. Intentional and purposeful focus on building a culture of collaboration is the secret for leaders striving to make a difference. In building a culture of collaboration, Curtis and Lorna Hewson will share simple tips, ideas, and strategies to take your organization's collaborative efforts to the next level. When we think about why norms, um, I've often admitted to groups that I actually didn't think norms were critically important when we started in collaborative teams. It's we were a, we were an organization where people got along. Um, there there wasn't necessarily strife or conflict. Uh, norms really should be about teams that either don't know one another well or uh, have difficulty collaborating. So, what would you go back and say to the former me who I've learned, but saying no? Nah, we don't need norms. We already know how to work together. So we hear this often from schools and especially, you know, small schools where where people have been together for a number of years. We often hear that, that, well, actually, do we really need norms? Because we already know how to work well together. But um, when we think about developing norms, it's really important for us to think about uh, the fact that we are not working under assumptions mm -hmm. when we clearly articulate the way that we work together. And that allows us to really create a situation of safety for everyone within the team because our expectations of how we work together is very, very clear. Establishing that psychological safety, I've come to learn, is so critically important. And it's really hard to do if we haven't clearly articulated what we expect of one another and what we expect of ourselves when we're working together. We want those norms to be able to help reinforce the collective behaviors and engagement that we would expect when we're coming together as a team. We've heard organizations refer to these as their rules of engagement or collective commitments. Again, we utilize the term of team norms, but really it's, it's about creating predictability and understanding how we expect one another to operate when working together. And when there's challenging situations, rather than, you know, one leader needing to approach somebody on the team mm -hmm. in terms of their um, not adhering to those ad norms, ad, those norms, but being able to uh, use the norms to help them have that conversation. I know for myself as a leader, when we would see interactions or behaviors that were having a negative impact on the work of the team, prior to having norms, that was a really difficult conversation to have with somebody mm -hmm. around how that behavior on this particular day had negatively impacted the team. But once we had norms, it became much easier to be able to say, this is what we agreed to be able to do and use it as an anchor point for those conversations. So what would you say, Lorna, and obviously our experience around this has been primarily working with schools, but really the principles apply with any organization mm. that are trying to build strong teams. How would you go about developing those norms so that they become our norms rather than something the leader has declared and this is how this person says we will interact. Mm -hmm. So uh, a really great way to begin this work is for uh, everyone on your team to have a sticky note and then for them personally to articulate the three or four norms that are really important for them 
personally mm -hmm. in terms of their engagement. And so beginning with that first step of each person has the opportunity to identify how they will engage in that work going forward. And then for us to be able to have uh, partners come together and determine what are some common norms that we've identified between the two of us and then what are some of the other norms that we could agree upon in that partnership and then again moving into a foursome and doing that same thing. I really love that idea of starting from a personal reflection of what do I need but then also what do I expect to for one another and you and I have done this numerous times within organizations. The building out allows that constant refinement, that sharing, that adaptability of thought so that by the time we get to a place where there's four or five groups within our organization that have now consolidated those norms four or five times, we can take that collection, bring it, wordsmith it, uh, in a very small group or even individually, mm -hmm. then bring it back to the team and say, do these three to five norms, and we would suggest probably five is really the cap, yeah. do these three to five norms represent what we feel is important when coming together to interact? So how would you respond when a organization says, well, that really was determined by one person who went and wordsmithed why don't we do the wordsmithing with that group of 20, 30, 50, 100 in our organization? Uh, how possible is that? Yeah. <laughs> is what it would be my, my answer. Um, being what we often find is that uh, a number of norms that are articulated are really, in essence, the same things. Mm -hmm. And so being We're trying able to, to have the yeah, intent the, or the essence of yeah. what was being shared. Together. And so just being able to have that one or a small group of people uh, wordsmith, which mm -hmm. we know it's impossible with a number of people, but just doing that wordsmithing and then bringing it back to the team to get that confirmation of, do you see your norms reflected? It mm -hmm. might be worded differently, but do you it's see where it can, can yeah. fit? Yeah. So we often say just creating the norms is not enough. So we have that norms. And of course, you want to have opportunities to come back as new team members come into the team to revisit, keep coming back. Do they still reflect what we felt? But we've often said reinforcing the norms mm -hmm. is actually more important than just their creation. Well, the reinforcing is about living them that 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 initial step of step of creation mm -hmm. and then we have it in a document somewhere we've got it on a poster somewhere doesn't impact the ongoing day-to-day -day work that is happening within those teams so we really want the opportunity to live out those norms mm -hmm. in a way of reinforcing them well and i think from our observations and what we've lived through teams too we've seen a spectrum of from from one side of the spectrum of we have norms but nobody ever really looks at them to we have norms at the start of a meeting we'll say can everyone review the norms or someone even reads the norms out loud to further on the spectrum where i would say we want to be of how do we truly live them so first off i think having them visible mm, matters absolutely so what are some ways that that you've seen School schools or other organizations make the norms visible so that they are truly part of our our um, organization and even visibly present when we come together as teams. Yeah, so a very simple way is to put it onto a poster and have it in your meeting space, uh, putting it at the top of your agenda mm -hmm. so it becomes evident that that is something that is going to influence the meeting coming up. So having it part of that agenda is really important as well. And we also would encourage that you actually identify one norm each time that you come together that you can really focus on and uh, and really put into practice during that particular meeting. Yeah, so aside from the posting, and again, I've also seen it as a table display oh, yeah, or a sure. tent card on the table, 
Now let's get into the how do you live it. And there's really two critical ways that we want to look at. So what you've attended to is the practice. Let's pick one to practice each time. And sometimes it can be even really explicit to be able to say one of our norms is that we will ask questions openly and honestly. Mm. So today, let's each have question cards in front of us. And the object is to use two of them because we're going to live out this norm. Essentially, what we try and set up is that we're consistently practicing the essence so that it becomes normalized. And we've often used simple, simple tools like question cards. Yeah. Like yeah, if sure. the norm is we will be solutions oriented in our discussion, being able to say, um, Lorna, your job today is on a post note. Every time you hear what if or I wonder if those are phrases we use when we're thinking about solutions. Let's put a tally and at the end, see where we're at for those numbers of tallies, even to be able to say that we're going to pick this one norm to really focus upon. This norm is that everyone's voice will matter and be engaged. So we'd like at different points today for you to solicit the the voice or opinions of your colleagues. That's something we're really going to focus on doing today. Mm -hmm. And even things like, you know, you can buy the little elastics um, at the dollar store to put those elastics around our wrist, you know, five mm -hmm. or six of them. And every time we contribute an idea, if, if that's one of your norms yeah. that we readily contribute ideas to the conversation, then we slip off one of those bands and throw it into a, mm -hmm. the center of the table and then reflect on at the end, you know, what are all of the the bands that are in the middle and and really living out again mm -hmm. being a, a real representation of uh how we are living our norms so you've gone right into that last way that we can continue to reinforce is coming back and reflecting at the end it may be reflecting on how many what ifs did we have today how many elastic bands those are quite quantifiable but uh we've also seen situations where they'll say all right we're going to go around and on a scale of one to five, how engaged did you feel you were today and why? Because the norm we are looking at today was remaining engaged and present in conversations. Mm -hmm. We've often seen too in team meetings where they'll assign a role where it's that person's job at the end to reflect on the norms, how we did and to offer when did you see this norm being lived within the meeting that one person's just going to be really cognizant of looking for examples of that norm. So just having that opportunity to be explicit about the norm, focusing on that one norm, and then and then determining a way that you will represent mm -hmm. that throughout the meeting and with that reflection at the end too really allows us to again live our norms as opposed to it just merely being an activity that we have done at one point in time well and i think too that that reflection can then happen as an overall team to be able to say all right when we see this norm happening uh, with fidelity and really living within our organization, what do we see? What does it look like when we are fully present and engaged in our conversations? If that's a norm that we've said it's important. Or conversely, what does it not look like? What are some behaviors that are actually counter to this, um, this particular norm? And then we've often seen organizations that go that one further step in time to be able to say, if anyone violates this norm, what do we agree is our response? Uh, I think without that piece, we always look to the leaders to be the stewards of the norms, which is not a bad thing either. But when we can get to a place of we agree, this is how we will respond if a norm is not being lived by any one of mm -hmm. us, it really shares that ownership and deepens our commitment to the work of the team. I think another thing to realize is that uh, as we develop our norms that initial time, mm -hmm. it's not the one and done. Right. That we want opportunity to be able to come back 
and review and reflect on the norms and do we have we really defined what we need especially after you've been engaging with that yeah. team for a year or more then to come back and say okay now are we at the same space do we need to do some revision of our norms or updating or is there a norm that we need to put in place because we've been routinely seeing this one collective behavior getting in the way yeah, for us to yeah, be working together. Yeah. And sometimes what we see is when we first develop norms, sometimes they're kind of superficial mm -hmm. just yep. because it's their first time in that development. And uh, after, uh, after a year, being able to go back to that and say, actually, we don't need this norm because it's, right. it's really just how we operate. But there might be some more refining of some of the other norms that we've developed. Right. So a great example of that is when we have a norm that's more procedural, when we start, like we will follow the the pace of the agenda and stick to the timings of our agenda where in time it may become more behavioral mm -hmm. to say we will respect the time of everyone in the room and again i love that idea of so what will we do if somebody breaks that yeah. and it doesn't have to be punitive we we saw yeah. one school where they had the norm of arrived on time and ready to engage and if anyone broke that norm boom their job was to bring snacks next time yes. uh, for the rest of the team Again, simple ways, but that we can keep that norm. So that kind of transitions us into the last little bonus that we wanted to talk about of sometimes it feels very structural, uh, procedural when we think and talk about norms, but they can also be really fun within mm -hmm. our teams. So even that one example of if someone breaks the showing up on time norm, they're going to bring snacks. One of the ones that I have loved being able to see comes from a, uh, High School in Medicine Hat, Alberta, Crescent Heights High School, where they had introduced the role of Norm. And, of course, when they started, they started with the cheers montage of Norm uh, <laughs> as a way to introduce that. But it was Norm's job that if anyone went on a tangent, and particularly the day I was observing, they were trying to really live out the Norm around, let's focus on what is in our locus of control, when in our our problem solving and discussion time. And it was Norm's job. They had a staples button that when you press it, it goes, that was easy. That person's job was to press the button if anyone went off on to something out of our locus of control. It was Just super interesting. Yeah, it was super and... interesting to watch as an observer where without the norm and the discussion around it, I may be really offended by an individual cutting me off when I have something that I, th I think is valuable to share, but because they had discussed it, when someone pressed, that was easy. When a person had gotten into a conversation that really was taking them away from things that were in their sphere of influence or locus of control, the, the person who had gone there went, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. I'll bring it back. It, it actually helped really redirect that conversation and was a fun way. There was some levity that came with that. I've seen other schools now where they've heard that Staples um, story that I just shared, where they'll actually have that in the middle of the table for anyone to press when they feel that we're getting off topic, because that's a norm we collectively want to be able to reinforce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, another thing that we've seen with teams uh, is creating competitions oh, between yeah. teams yeah. to be able to say, okay, if we said that we are solutions focused, right. then we're going to engage in the language of what if. And, and they begin to create tallies of how many times that that phrase comes into play in our team meeting of what if. And so they tally. And then at the end of the day, all of the teams share their tally of what if to find out who got the most. <laughs> I actually saw that in an elementary school in Rocky Mountain House where the winning team, I think it was a bag of mini eggs or something <laughs> that they received at the end of the day. But it was so much fun during the day when a team would be saying something and someone will go, what if, mark that down, mark that down, <laughs> what if, and it, uh, it again brought smiles, but it was really, really effective because it was putting people in that place of 
what are solutions that we're looking for and and using phrasing intentional phrasing like what if or i wonder if was soliciting that innovative thinking amongst the team and and when we think about you know the norms that created that situation in the first mm. place then it really is putting concentrated effort into living those norms yeah so i think this all wraps back around for leaders to be thinking about how do I introduce and utilize norms? And we've heard over and over again from schools and different organizations that being able to infuse them early in developing um, highly impactful teams is always more valuable than trying to bring them in later when it feels like we have to introduce this in order to fix uh, an issue that is occurring. It's, it becomes a little more reactive in that situation than being proactive. So we'd really encourage all those leaders that are listening or viewing to be able to think about how do we establish those norms? How do I gain collective ownership and voice around it? But then most importantly, how do we continue to come back over and over and over to reinforcing and living those norms? It's what builds that really deep foundational collaborative culture mm -hmm. within our building. It's, it's one of the things that is very, very critical when we can clearly articulate what would we see when we're working in a team and then be able to look for and reinforce evidence of it happening within our organizations. Mm -hmm. So with that, please check out the show notes. Uh, give us a like, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. You'll also note in the description that we will share some resources around processes for developing norms, some strategies for continually reinforcing, and we'll share some blog postings around the work as well to be able to support what it is that you're doing to build a culture of collaboration. With that, thank you so much and wish you all the best. Take care. See you soon. For more on collaborative response, visit jigsawlearning.ca or join the JL Insider to receive access to newly added resources and content. Make sure to follow us on social media. Subscribe to the podcast and the Jigsaw Learning YouTube channel to access past and upcoming episodes. Join us again as we continue to share tips, ideas, and strategies to help you continue to refine your culture of collaboration.